The one mistake most employees make and regret later. When I was growing up, my views about life was leave the exact way you want to leave or don't leave. Do the exact job you love to do or do nothing. Be who you want to be or don't leave. Because life is one and short, I think it's not worth leaving it and doing what you hate. According to the Gallup poll, 85% of employees worldwide hate their jobs. This is a terrible situation because our work is the single most important thing in our life. That's where we spend 40 hours each week. To hate money, to hate Monday to Friday is to hate the entire life. Yet, instead of people to fight for a better life, most employees make the one mistake I'll discuss with you in this video. If you're new here, consider subscribing so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Now here's the thing, what most employees look for in their jobs isn't fulfillment but a bigger paycheck. Somehow, these people believe that if they can have some raise, their life will be better. What I think people should look for isn't a raise but resignation. The biggest mistake you can make as an employee is to wish for a raise in a job you don't like. Let me explain this. You have a single, short life to live and to live that life very well, you need two non-negotiable things, money and fulfillment. You don't only have to get paid well for your job, your job shouldn't be a job in the first place. Playing for a living In the days of our ancestors, when humans were hunters and gatherers, our fathers did a great job of combining the play, the learning and the working into a single pleasant hard to differentiate activity. In their time, you learn by playing and you work by play. In the real sense of it, they had no job. You shouldn't have a job too. Monday should be your best day. You should hate Sundays because no work is done on Sunday. You should hiss on Friday because it marks the end of working days. Your Monday to Friday should be the best days of your life if truly you have a life that's worth living. Now, how can you achieve this? You can only achieve this by doing what you truly love, what actually looks like play to you. Life without hobbies At the time of making this video, I'm in my mid-30 and I've lived almost all my adult life without any significant hobby. Not much play gives me joy like work. The only thing that makes me high is doing what I'm doing. Even though I don't have any master or employer who tells me when and how to work, I sometimes resume to my office by 3 in the morning because I don't have a job. I'm simply playing for a living. The biggest mistake you can make as an employee is to wish for a bigger paycheck in a job you don't like. Your life is one and short. Don't leave it working. Leave your life playing. Now you may ask me, so how can I do this? How can I play for a living? Knowing who you are. Socrates said, know thyself. The very first thing you ought to do when you become an adult is to know who you are. Who are you? What are your strengths and weaknesses? What do you have which others don't? What do you lack which others have? Your life is like a machine. Anyone who wishes to operate a machine must first know what the machine is. You have to know who you are if you truly want to live a meaningful life. Resurrect Yourself After knowing who you are, then you need to resurrect yourself. You see, most of us are dead, dead to the crowd. Right from the childhood, everyone around us has been influencing the way we think, what is right and what the society thinks is the best jobs. These best jobs are often judged by how much they pay you. In my country, Everyone agrees that working for a bank is a great job and every parent prays and influences their children to work in a bank, as a doctor, a lawyer or even as an engineer. The problem about that is, though some of these industries may pay well, not everyone can be fulfilled working in a bank or a doctor or even a lawyer. Because our society has often brainwashed and castrated us into believing the high-paying jobs are the best jobs, we are usually dead before we are 25. We are dead because we've lost our first love. We are dead because we've lost our originality. We are dead because we've allowed everyone to tell us what is good for us. The way to live is the way of resurrection 
and that means you must start thinking for yourself. You have to start looking inwards to discover what it is you actually love to do with your life. After you've discovered this, half of the battle is won. Then, decide to think by yourself. Decide to pursue a career you truly love, not what your parents or society want you to pursue. Look back at your childhood If you ask me, how can I know what I love to do? My answer may be, look at your childhood. Usually before the world succeeded at killing us, we tend to show the signs of independence and individuality. We tend to talk about what we want and how much we love such a thing. Those years are usually our teenage years before we fully entered the callous world. What you loved and dreamed of doing as a teen may be the answer to your true passion. In my own case, as a boy of 14, I would leave my parents' home on the weekend, sit in a lonely place and start writing. It was my food. I love joining words together. Writing was never work for me. Today, I make more money from my writing skill than from any other thing. So, look back at your life and see what you love doing as a teen. Maybe that's what you ought to be doing now. The Head That Wears The Crown Now, after you've discovered what exactly you love to do with your life, do not make another mistake by thinking that it ought to be easy. In fact, what the world wants you to do is going to be much easier for you to do than what you want to do because the world has spent many decades perfecting the system for what it wants you to do. Let me give you some examples here. My parents wanted me to have all the degrees most people have. They then wanted me to work as an accountant. That's pretty straightforward, right? Being an accountant already has a tested route. Study very hard in school, have two or three degrees and get a job in a big company. That's a straight road. All you have to do is to follow the road judiciously. But that wasn't what I wanted to do. Instead, I wanted to be an entrepreneur and a writer. How do you become a successful entrepreneur? How do you become a writer? Nobody knows because there is no predictable path into those two worlds. You can do all you know how to do and still fail as an entrepreneur. Nobody promises you that you'll get finance for your business. Nobody promises you that the market will accept your products. Nobody promises you that your books will be popular. Nobody promises you anything so you have to figure them out one after the other. It was a tough journey. It took me 8 years of hard hustle before I had my first breakthrough. So, don't ever think that following your dreams will be easy. One thing I can guarantee you is that after you achieve your dream, you will no longer live in the realm of men. You'll be in heaven. It's heaven because you'll be the happiest person on earth. You'll wake up to play while everyone else wakes up to work. Here are my final words. As an employee, if you are among the 85% who hate their jobs, don't deceive yourself by thinking that a bigger paycheck will solve your problem. For you to have money and fulfillment together, you have to figure out who you are and what exactly you want out of life. After figuring out these things, you must be willing to pay the price to get from where you are to where you want to be. You may start your side hustle while you have the job you hate. This may take time before you see any significant result but if you stay stubborn, you'll win big. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Are you between the ages of 15 and 40? Then we invite you to join our new channel which was specially created to share with you inspiration and life's lessons to succeed in life. We call it Under 40 TV. Kindly look at the description box to join the Under 40 TV. We love you.